Behind me is my 2019 Rockwood 2280 ESP. Over the last three years, I've put over 50 modifications in this bad boy, and in today's video, I tell you guys my top 10 modifications in my pop-up camper. Without wasting any more time, let's get into number 10. On the top of my roof is a Wi-Fi booster, and there's a switch that goes with that Wi-Fi booster. And number 10 on my list is underbelly lighting on my pop-up camper. I installed this for a few reasons. Number one is it's an amber light, so it reduces a lot of bugs. After we're done doing dishes and everything from the outdoor uh, chuck box, more on that later. Um, I like to turn off the awning bar and I like to turn on the underbelly lights for kind of like an ambiance. Plus it also reduces energy consumption. I think it burns about a third of the watts that that awning bar does. So number 10 on my pop-up camper is my underbelly lights. So number nine on my list is actually an easy modification. You guys at home can do this. And I went ahead and flipped my faucet in the shower compartment. Prior to doing this, I had to like hunch down to wash my hair because the the uh, hose was not long enough to reach the top of the uh, the uh, roof here, and so by flipping it, you gain another eight inches. And I actually use this little carabiner hook, basically that I made, and uh, it's worked out really well. So number nine on my list is an easy one: flipping the faucet in the shower. So number eight on my list has to do with my sink and my shower. And I don't know why, but I think all manufacturers that option the cassette toilet with the shower and have a sink inside of the pop-up camper, the plumbing for them are on separate drains. And early on owning this camper, uh, I found a post on Facebook where the guy modified it. And so I went ahead and copied it. So this is not my plan, but it works flawlessly. And what I did is I added a air vent for the sink, which helps out with draining, but I combined the shower and the sink into two and a half inch plumbing that then combines into a four inch hookup hose. And so now when I go to a state park, I can hook up to uh, regular sewage and uh, I can just use unlimited water basically. So number eight on my list is combining my sink and my shower into one drain. So number seven on my list is the addition to USB outlets on the pop-up camper. I installed two sets of USB outlets in the ceiling. I've also got another pair of USB outlets underneath the dinette. These work out extremely well for charging your phones, your tablets at night, playing on your phone before you go to bed. I also was able to install USB lights on the bunk ends, which is pretty cool. And I've also got USB fans. The pop-up camper did come with this unique 3.5 millimeter jack with this corded cable with a light and a fan. That thing went in the trash and I installed USB outlets in the ceiling. Number seven on my list is USB outlets. So number six on my list is the storage bins on the roof of my ceiling. The roof of my ceiling? Ceiling of my roof. Ceiling of my roof. I love these things, guys. They're worth every penny. And um, I see a lot of chatter on the uh, Facebook groups that they're so expensive. I would never spend that. Do a DIY. Well, I have a DIY one right here that works out really well. It just adds more storage but we love these storage bins. We use these for our clothes and we use one of them for the pantry. My kids share one and my wife and I share one. We take them in the house, we pack up everything for the week and we bring them out here to the camper, throw them on the ground while we're traveling, get to camp, put them up, we're ready to go. Camper stays organized. Number six on my list is storage bins. So number 6.1 is going to be more storage. Uh, I installed these kind of coat racks up here. We've got four of them. We come in from uh, cold camping. We can hang up all our coats, get them up off the ground. We can still sit at the couch, which is pretty cool. And then I also installed this shoe rack, uh, again, just with the D-rings, same little hooks, and it works out really well for my keys, my wallets, toothbrushes. Uh, again, more storage. So number six on my list is just storage uh, hanging from the roof of my camper. I gotta go with my list. Can't remember which I'm on. Number five extra storage. So number five on my mods list of my pop-up camper is external storage. Both my tongue box and what I did this season, which I'm extremely proud of, been trying to solve this for years, underbelly storage on my pop-up camper. I store rubber gloves for changing out the cassette. I've got trash bags in here. I've got glove, my propane, um, S'mores, man, you gotta have the s'more kit, right? It's all right here. 
easy to access and uh, I've got another one of these drawers on the other side of the camper. And then when I first bought my camper, I also moved the propane to the storage on the 2280 ESP and I installed a Harbor Freight tongue box and that stores a bunch of stuff. So number five on my list is external storage. Number four on my list is my outdoor chuck box kitchen. Um, I built this early on from owning the camper because we didn't want to cook bacon and sausage inside the pop-up camper and get it filthy with grease. Uh, this is filthy with grease, but it's outside and we absolutely love it. We store paper towels, aluminum foil, paper plates, plastic silverware, seasonings, um, and even some dry food out here at night. We can close this up, keep bugs, critters, and raccoons from getting in there. This folds down, goes in the little box. That's why it's called a chuck box. It's the first thing out and the last thing in of the pop-up camper. Number four on my list is my outdoor kitchen chuck box. All right, guys, number three on my list is the addition to a 12-volt refrigerator. Um, I debated whether this would be one, two, or three, but uh, without number one, number three doesn't work. So again, number three on my list is a 12-volt refrigerator. We love this thing. Uh, we put all of our food, our produce. We can go a week camping. Uh, matter of fact, we're going to Colorado for 10 days um, this September. Um, but the three-way fridge on the pop-up campers aren't very efficient. They're not very effective. Um, I know in the summer months, they don't get very cold, but in the winter months, boondocking on propane, it actually freezes. Um, I, I put on low and it will still freeze if it's like 32 degrees outside. So we only put meat or anything that can freeze uh, in the uh, three-way refrigerator. We put all our vegetables, cheese, and pastas, or whatever we pre-made in here, uh, stuff that would basically get ruined if it froze again. Yep, that's right. I'm sitting on my second Dometic CFX 45, um, and we're using this one outside of the camper for drinks specifically. I got rid of my uh, Yeti cooler. I'm not messing with ice anymore, guys. Done. No more ice. I installed a 12-volt uh, uh, car socket up underneath on the floor and this thing just plugs in and we're good to go. So number three on my list, guys, is adding two, two, two 12-volt fridge to my pop-up camper. Oh, so much better. Number two on my list, guys, upgraded six inch Zynas mattress. I should have done this a long time ago. We just did this this season, so it's fairly new to us, but we absolutely love it. Now, I'll tell you one thing that we had to do. Your camper might be different, but we had to move from the king side over to the queen side in order to do this, and that's because the door hangs from the ceiling above the king side of the bed and you could not put a upgraded mattress on that side number two on my list guys an upgraded six inch foam mattress get rid of those oem pos mattresses from the manufacturer number one on my list is my electrical system Starting with the upgrade to lithium Battleborn batteries, I have 200 amp hours and a Victron 2000 watt inverter multi plus unit. And I am absolutely, I, I'm just speechless, really. Uh, this system is now three years old and I couldn't be happier. I have a DC to DC uh, car charger, so when I'm driving down the road, I get about 30 amps. I have a portable 100 watt solar panel uh, charge controller right there. And right here is my 350 watts of solar I have permanently mounted on the roof of the pop-up camper. Now guys, we solely, I mean like 95% of the time, only boondock. So for me, this system is my heartbeat to my pop-up camper um, with decent sun in the winter months. Now, if you're familiar with solar, the sun doesn't get as high in the winter months. So I can go probably a week with the 200 amp hours of lithium Battleborn batteries and the 450 watts 
of solar um, with the power consumption needs that I have, which is really truly lights, the 12 volt refrigerators, and the most of all is the heater. The fan in the heater draws the most. And when you're winter camping with little kids, you need a heater. But my number one mod on my pop-up camper is my whole electrical system. It's the heartbeat. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Comment down below what your favorite mod is on my camper. And also tell me what your favorite mod is on your camper. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video. If you haven't seen this video right here, check it out. Thanks for watching.